Good morning. Hello. Welcome to our live broadcast. We are going to keep working on our smooth sailing shirt. It's coming along smashingly, except I just uh, made the fabulous discovery that I've been knitting with two different size needles because that's how I do. So, good morning. Yay. <gasps> Pearl clutch. <laughs> Woo! So anyway, we are at the point now where we're going to kind of connect. So I've done my homework, my slave driver, Judy. I've gone around front and back. So now we're going to work on um, connecting the panels and then continuing the, I guess, trunk part of the shirt. For those of you that are just joining, welcome. Thank you so much. Hello, the bee's knees. So good to see you. Thank you for joining us. We are working on this pattern. It's called Smooth Sailing by Dora Creadora, which I appreciate. I'm a Spanish professor, so when you add Dora to any of these adjectives, like trabajadora, things like that, that's why Dora the Explorer was exploradora. So I appreciate the meaning. It means to work. Okay? Someone who is a hardworking. Hardworking is a Dora. Okay, and yes, there will be a quiz at the end, so I hope you're studying. Flashcards are the best way, okay? They help you memorize. Okay, although everyone hates to make them, they really do work the best. Okay, you heard it here first from an English teacher and a Spanish teacher, although the English teacher didn't promote it, just the Spanish teacher. Because the English teacher can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my, my fabulous knitting bestie. All right, so I am now at connecting the front and back. So I have done one side. And now I'm going to steal some needles. I've also stolen her um, cord. So really, I, it's half Judy's project at this point. So I'm taking whichever one fits me better. <laughs> and since I've knit one side with one size needle and the other with another, one side's going to be so much bigger than the other. So, all right, hold on. I just got to... She'll just have to stuff her left bra and not her right. <laughs> so you, you heard it here first. So I had, I had a great start to my morning, right? So I got up. My dogs decided that now they're just not sleeping past 6.30. And at, so at 6.30, Loki's like, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, oh my God, dude, it's like seven. If you could just, just, just a seven, that would be cool because I don't have to get up right now. The kids aren't in school. So I got my coffee. I was sitting, sitting on the couch. My French bulldog jumps up on the couch and, you know, I'm like, oh, yay. He's just snuggling with me and patting with me. He turns around and he looks at me with those big, big puppy dog eyes and goes, ah, and vomited. I think it was like, seven, eight gallons. I, I, I mean, I was like, oh my God, how do you even have that much liquid in you? All on the front of me, all in my leg. I stood up, I'm like, oh my God, my husband's like, it's dripping into the couch. I'm like, it's dripping down into my show. You get the couch. I'm going to take a shower. I'm trying not to puke. So that was, that was 7 a.m. It was a nice start to the day. He didn't, he didn't give you any warning. No, he just was like, I know. I was doing me. yoga the other morning, and Maggie does yoga with me, and she's sitting beside me, and all of a sudden I see that. Oh, yeah, there's no warning like that. And I go, no, no, off the carpet, off the carpet. Right. I'm throwing the driver to the tile. Off the carpet, off the carpet. <laughs> nope, this jerk just was like, Mom, I love you so much. I'm like, seriously? So. You make I, your dogs vomit. I don't know what I, <laughs> We haven't even done any tequila or anything, so I find that rude. Okay. So I now have, I think, all the same size needles. Woo! All right, so here it says we are at, I am at, connecting the front and back. When you finish the back row, put a row start marker and connect the front. Judy says I don't have to because I'm working on two circular needles. Continue working in rounds, working the stripes in the same pattern so far. Work until blah, 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 blah. But mine's going to be longer because um, at this point, after two kids, nobody needs, you know, to be watching, seeing anything all up in Ain't nobody, to to that. Ain't nobody need to see that. That's just rude and wrong and rude. So we're going to finish the bodice with an I-cord edge. Okay, so at this point here. So if you notice, too, you're going to leave those four stitches that you put on the short, on the um, waist yarn. And if you kind of, you can kind of see as mine's going along, I realize now that's a good thing because then I can stitch that together and it's going to make a real nice smooth. And when I go, I'll, I'll it, bring it in. I'll have to do like a couple behind I'll do one to connect it, and then I'll kitchener those four stitches together, and it'll make a real nice seam. So I haven't put mine on yet because I wanted to, you know, kind of get to this point here. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then we're going to just... Now, did you stitch those four last four stitches? No. I just okay. finished. You just left them. I just left them. I just okay. left it as it was. So I got to the length, and then I stopped. So for today, so we can all laugh at this atrocity. So... But I like my colors. I think 
coming out nice. Yeah, you have to put those on waste, Joy. All right. Or actually, just it. leave them and just keep going around without them. But if be, no, you can't. You need to put them on waste. Yeah, I'm going to put them on waste, Joy. It's no big deal. So let me just throw my little. While me. she's doing that, yes. Tell us about your week. Well, my week, my week was good, but my husband watched the. Um, <laughs> he watched the podcast. Oh That's yeah, what, a, what did Gordon have to say? Oh, he loved it. But I realized I really ragged on my husband too much oh <laughs> i made too many jokes at his expense Aww. so um today i'm going to do a different one for all your husbands this okay. is a public service announcement okay ladies when you travel do you like to stop at yarn stores did you know if you're on ravelry ravelry has this neat little thing you go into the section marked yarns and if you look halfway down on the right hand side You'll see a little car icon, and it says Road Trip Planner. That's right, ladies. You put, open that up, and it has where are you starting from. You type in where you're starting from. You type in then below where you want to head up. Then you type in how many miles you're willing to detour to get to it. When I'm driving alone, 25 miles is nothing. When I'm with my husband, We'll go 10 to 15. Type that in, and it will come up every single yarn store on the way to your destination. You're going to have With a how mass... how many miles it is to get there, a website so you can look up their hours, you name it, it's on there. You're going to have a group of men at your house angry with you right now. You know that, right? I don't care. <laughs> That's my public See, service. Check that out. It is Wonderful. I think I'm going to have to road trip with women because my husband barely wants to stop for food. He's like, is it on the road? Are we there? I mean, we're not getting off the road. Can't you hold it? So I don't know that that would uh, be a road trip for now, my family. I, I get the hangries. And, I t and when I start getting hungry, I go, you have exactly. <laughs> 37 seconds. 37 minutes <laughs> before I become ugly. <laughs> Find a spot now. Yeah, I get hangry too. And so do my kids. So it's, it's a lot of fun to be my husband, as you can imagine. Poor guy. <laughs> wow, this one's just being a pain. And of course, when our kids and I all traveled, none of us ever had to go to the bathroom at the same time. No, of course not. No. Of course not. My husband doesn't care. He really is a good sport about it. He has never complained about having to stop. No, he's a good guy. He, he helped me out, too. He got me sand when I needed it before. That's right. When we were doing a an event, a live, not live, a uh, an event at uh, like a farmers market type of a thing, the woman was like, "You need to have thirty pounds of sand." I'm like, thirty pounds of sand? I should just have one of my children stand on this thing." And she got to meet Maggie last night. I know. Speaking of Maggie, you just brought in, and we talked about this last time. Will you talk about your yarn while oh, I try to figure this, this out? This is the Bluffton series, which she's still trying to figure out how to do. That we were talking about. Uh, I'm trying to do a Bluffton series. We have um, Mermaid's Tail. Here, let me grab that. Because uh, it's so May, this is May River Dolphins. And yeah, we showed that before. Yeah, here's Mermaid's Tail. And then this is Spanish Moss, which is gorgeous in shades of greens mm -hmm. and browns. Love it. And then we're I'm, uh, she and I just discussed we're going to have to do one called Party at the Sandbar. And uh, what did I say? Pluff Mud. Pluff Mud. Yes, my, uh, my friend decided she was going to drag me into the pluff mud last week, and I have aversion to slimy things, and uh, it was one of the more disgusting experiences in my life, but now I can say I did it, and I didn't drown in it. It was like quicksand. You know how you, I like, know. as I a know. kid, you think quicksand's going to be everywhere, and then you never find it? Yeah. Oh, no, I found it. I found it. I was all Pluff mud has a unique smell, too, and once you kind of get used to it, Somebody once said it, when you smell it, you know you're close to home. And it's true once you've become a true low country person. Well, for me, uh, my olfactory system apparently got fried with COVID. So I can't smell anymore. So to me, I didn't notice that it was anything. It has a unique smell. Yep. So but it's still a better smell than the paper mills. Well, oh, I mean, everything Lord, is dead bodies mills. are pretty much better than the paper mills. I know. So, all right. Just about done. She's almost ready. ready. Okay. I'm ready now. The last one decided to be grouchy with me, but... Anyway, okie doke. All right, so I've done my first side, and I'm about to start the second side. So do you want me to crisscross here, or? Um, yeah, you can. All right. 
And you're going to want to do it at the other end too because it's not connected at the other end. Yeah. When you're doing socks or you're working on two circulars, you know, especially socks, you, you, you cast them on and then you're going to put half of those stitches on a second needle, set of circulars. So they're connected down here, but they're not connected up here. So to connect them, you simply cross <coughs> one, the back, the first stitch on the back needle and you put it on the front needle. Then that becomes the set, the first stitch now becomes the second stitch on the front needle. You take that off, lift it up and over and put it on the back needle. You've now connected that front and back. So you just take first stitch to the front, first stitch to the back. It connects it. If you don't, you keep having this ladder. So it's almost like binding off. It. Yeah, it's, well, not really binding off because you don't lose a stitch. Right. You're just switching the stitches. Gotcha. You switch the first two stitches from the front to the back and the, and the back to the front. Okay? Otherwise, if you don't do that, you're going to continue to have a loose ladder all the way down. And it never tightens up. And you want it to tighten up so you can't tell where that beginning and the end is. See how tight mine is? You can't see. It looks like I've been knitting completely in the round on one set of needles the whole time. It's like you've taken it to the plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Botox. <laughs> um, Tighten and, that and, right up. and really what you do is you knit, you knit a stitch, give it a little tug, knit two stitches, and give it a little tug, and it holds. All right. So knitting stitches, here we go. And I'm still holding here until we get to the put on stripes. All right. And I just twisted my needle all the way around. Don't plant my me. I just dropped all my. Thank God, it's only four stitches. I just dropped. Them off. <laughs> Thank goodness. Go. All right. So my job is done today. I've talked about that. I've given the public service about yarn shops. I'm not going to make a joke at my husband's expense no, today. No, no. Gordon's a sweetie. All right. I got to put my. Some days, but the other day I told him when we were fighting over the, uh, the thermostat, <laughs> as always, that my sincerest wish for him come back in his next life as a menopausal woman with hot flashes. Yes, have fun with that. Have fun with that. Okay. So, for whatever reason, there we go. Now I'm back in the saddle, hopefully. Alright, so watch her. Oh God, don't watch me. She's gonna do it. No pressure. I already did it. Oh, you connected it? Yeah, I think and so. And now you're gonna wear I'm All right, so you continue with the pattern, eight stitches, eight rows, and then you do two rows of the alternate stripe. If, no, I didn't do mine exactly every other one. I kind of went pink, green, pink, green, green. Now I'm doing, you know, that little sequence. So when I started going around, I had to remember what my sequence was on the front so it matched on the back. I did for once. Gotcha. Gotcha. And it talks about jogless stripes. The, the hard thing about when you're knitting in the round and you're doing stripes and you switch to another color, it wants to go wonky on you. And I have tried all the different ones. You know, they tell you, oh, you do this, you go down one below, and then you pull it up and you put it on. And I'm like, I don't have any wine in my house to do that tonight. Sorry. <laughs> and I've tried all kinds of different things. This one is the very best one I've ever done. You simply go around with your with if you change when you go to change color you go around all the way around on the second trip around and I'm right there this is my second no it's not yes it is on the second time you go around I'm right there okay I'm going to pick up and go around again and I got to switch needles here's my front needle Hello. Hello, be quiet over there. <laughs> yes. There it is. Okay. <laughs> so, on the first stitch, you don't stitch it of the second round. What, do you just slip it? You slip it. Okay. You just slip it. And keep on going around. And I'll show you. I'll show you the difference between one that worked and one that didn't. Because I didn't do it right the first time I thought, oh, that won't work. And I tried my old way. And I can show you the difference. They do talk about this way, isn't and you can watch a video for this site. Yeah. And did you like it? It was a video easy to watch. Video. You didn't watch the video. Because like I said, when I went to watch the first video on how to do the pickup and make the I cord, mm -hmm. she used very small needles and she had 
she cut and her and her hands covered up what she was knitting. And I was like, I can't see this. Do you remember what pattern that sweater that you wear or that shirt that you're wearing? I love yes, it. it's called the Hattie T. Hattie. Hattie. H A D I. Okay. And this was um, so pretty. I dyed this. This is cotton, and it was ice dyed. Ooh. You ever done ice dyeing? No, I've heard of it. But how does how does it work? Obviously, ice dyeing is really really water? cool. Nope. Well, yeah, so you have to use cotton yarn. Okay. Because it, it has to be cotton because you have to use a Procyon dye, P-R-O-C-I-A-N. Okay. And that is for plant-based. Okay. You have to uh, have hot for, I mean, acid dyes are for animal-based. So this was a Procyon dye. And it's so cool. You take your yarn, you know, you prep it. I'm sorry, I have a snack. There we go. You, you prep your yarn. Mm -hmm. And then I laid it over like a couple pizza screens into a tub. I laid my yarn out. Then you cover the yarn with ice. It took like two bags of ice. Covered okay. it completely. And then you sprinkle the dye onto the ice. Interesting. As the ice melts, it dyes the yarn. Oh, that's really, oh, that gave it cool color. Yeah, it gave it a really, really so cool color. So it was the color. same blue, but it just melted it into different? I used like a denim blue. I'd like it. And because you don't heat it, I've had some trouble with bleeding. I've had to go back in and bleed. So it kind of fades a little bit each time, but I wanted it to do that. That was the color I chose. Oh, and, the, and the mortal words of um, Pee Wee Herman when he fell off his bike, I meant to do that. <laughs> you seriously just quoted Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> yeah, I'm quoting Pee Wee Herman today. This is our English teacher here. She's read all the greats, and she's quoting Pee Wee. I once did that when I accidentally fell and tripped over somebody's book bag. <laughs> when I got up, I went, I meant to do that. Okay, so see the first one? First one looks bad because I didn't do it. Second one, it blends in. There's a little bit of a, I'm up here on a hill, but then it goes around. It won't be noticeable. Much better. Healthy Look again. Natural. See this one? Bad. This one, <laughs> good. Slip that first stitch. It works. Works right. so nicely. i got to remember which one was mine. But oh, we are using different colors. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought we had the same green. Mm -mm. Slightly different. I can't be a copycat. I think you've lost your white. I did lose my white. There's my white. I was sitting on another sweater yesterday. I was out in the Carolina room. And my gray went... And I was knitting the sweater from hell. Oh, God. My gray no. went underneath my um, rattan sofa. And I had to go to the bathroom. And I got up, and it was all wrapped around my leg. And it was like, I had to hurry up and get it unwrapped because I really had to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and um, it was cute. Nobody was home, though, you so were nobody hot mess. saw it. Yeah, nobody got to witness that Nobody got to awesome. videotape it. That's too bad, because really, you need to catch those moments. See, I am so glad my kids grew up before they were, before we had phones. Oh, my God, videotape. aren't you so glad? I mean, seriously, the stuff that I did in college, I mean, I'd be, I, I'm, I certainly could never run for office now, but, I mean, if we had it on video, it would be far worse. Oh, I meant my kids. They would have taped every stupid thing I ever did. Oh, well, mine already did that for me, so. <laughs> See? Because yeah. your kids are younger. Mine are in their 30s. Yeah. No, my... Now they have kids that do that to them. Yeah. So it's fine. Mother's curse and all that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. Yeah, no, my, mine videotaped me. But now they're at the, they're at the funny age age where they send me funny stuff and I'm like oh my god this is great where did you find this and of course everything's on TikTok so right, yeah. and I just started my first account on TikTok for the shop so now I need to figure out how to how to TikTok so is that where you're going to dance while knitting uh well I so I've been following for some reason they have this heavy metal knitting experience I mean what exactly is this I don't you see know. this it's those crazy Scandinavian so they have this whole show I don't know exactly what it is but they play heavy metal songs and then they knit and I feel like we should go and but I I mean I can't carry a tune in a bucket so I but I could probably kazoo I could kazoo the hell out of some songs so are you in for this Judy so kazooing well I mean I think we should just go and and play sure. kazoo, <laughs> play the kazoo and and Girl's knit trip? yes oh, Yes, Our, we have a friend that's, okay, it's not really my friend. I've, I've just decided she's my friend, so I've friended her. But it's Judy's dear friend, Norma, that has, very fortunately for her, she, what, three months in Ireland? Three months in Ireland, they rented a house. But they deserve it, because guess what? They were on their, it wasn't their first cruise, but they were on and around the, Norma, if you're listening, hi. Hi, Norma, we miss, miss you. you. They were on an around the world qu qu uh, cruise. Cruise. Cruise when COVID broke out. They were literally kind of like dumped in Sydney, Australia. 
just as it was oh. really... They were in Australia at the same time Tom Hanks was, and he and his wife came down with it. Coincidence? So, I think not. Then their plane flew them into San Francisco. They got out of San Francisco one day before San Francisco shut down. Oh so, gosh. yeah, they kind of did not get their around-the-world cruise. So they've been waiting How for two years. How far were they years. into the cruise? Uh, see, they left on January the 5th or 6th. And it was March, the beginning of March, when they got dumped. <laughs> that stinks. About halfway. That stinks. So they're in, they're in um, Ireland right now. So go ahead and finish your story. So but anyway, she's, she's sending all these gorgeous, and I, I really want to go to Ireland at some point, but I need to do all these things in the summertime because I don't care for the cold weather and all that fun that she goes said along. it literally rains every single day. Yeah. Right? Well, we were in a little bit of a rain fun yeah. Here of late, here in um, yeah, but Hilton we're not Head, wearing sweaters Bluffton. like they are. Long, no, long heavy sweaters. No, we are definitely not wearing long heavy sweaters. Yeah, but, but she likes the cold. So yeah, well that's good. But she's looking at all these castles. So I just told her that I don't think it's a big ask. Just get us a castle, and so we'll have a retreat. Yes, that's what I'm saying. A, a lovely retreat. We'd go to Ireland and we'd hit up all these. You know, we'd hit all the Norwegian places. And I just think we should do this and have a knitting. Extravaganza, really? Um, I go on knitting retreats, and let me tell you, we have so much fun. Not surprised. Not surprised so we need to girl. plan one. Where are some places we could go? Uh, I don't know. I have to think about something that we can, we can, we can do. Do you have any news about your house yet? If you're going to be, I think we're staying. Oh, we're like ninety-five percent sure. Oh, thank you. I have to tell you the whole story on that. That's pretty good. Okay. I think we're staying. Okay, good. Ninety-five percent sure. I texted the my friend Kathy today and said don't give up our bocce spot so okay good okay good I, so. I think so so we're almost neighbors we're almost neighbors remember she now has access to my house Judy Judy it's the three minutes you're sleeping a night please open the door although last time um, I have to say Gordon had a fantastic suggestion Judy's husband that we should maybe do like um, what the heck's his name? Sheldon on, uh, on on the Big Bang Theory and have our fun with flags. Yeah. So did you come prepared today? Fun with flags. Fun with stripes. I yes. just found it. <laughs> fun with stripes. I love stripes. I love anything stripes. You show me a shawl with stripes in it, I've got to do it. See, I love stripes. Show me a pair of underwear at Walmart in the granny section that's got stripes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, I like stripes, but the problem is, is that stripes um, on my shape make me look like 45 pounds heavier than I am, and I'm too vain for that. So I love me some stripes, but uh, see, so, yeah, that's because you're still young. I've reached the age where I don't care. <laughs> I, still, I like it. I still I'm care. I'm gonna wear it. I still care. So, so yeah, we're at that point. I'm like, oh god, because I've reached that point in my life where you know something happens to my husband. I'm really sorry. I'm not, I'm not looking. Oh, for God, no. Else. I would never get married again. I mean, no, I love my I'm husband. I'm going to tell my husband, you don't have to worry about me having an affair. Because I'd have to, like, pluck my lips, shave my legs. <laughs> You're selling you? yourself really hot. Take it's like a shower. It's like Tinder here. You know, I have to do all those things in order to have an affair. So, so You yeah, should start you know, your ad with pluck my lips yeah. because that is. That is yeah, masks during the pandemic were great, weren't they? You didn't have to. Well, that. except you kept to smell your own breath, which was disgusting. Well, why do you think we ate all those lifesavers, those peppermint lifesavers, which I brought some today if oh. you'd like some. Yeah, of course I always want We them. got hooked on them, too, because we didn't like, um, I don't know what it was. Put it on my pocket. No. All right. Anyways, uh, we got hooked on them because of, of mask breath, and it's the peppermint lifesavers. They're so good. Yeah, they are. And good. you know what? They're good too because you're really craving something sweet in the evening while I'm knitting. I just pop that in my mouth. One of those. Well, I've gotten to the point where I'm very frustrated with my weight because, um, as I mentioned, I was a runner before I got COVID a couple of years ago. And when we got it, it was too early for us to be um, in the age group where we could get the vaccinations. So we got sick, and I got so sick, and I never really, I'm still at about yeah, I'd like to push it to 70, about 70% back to where I felt a year and a half prior to, you know, to today. Um, but so this week's my first week of getting back uh, into my Peloton cult. So I, I did my first uh, bike ride with Cody, who is 
my secret gay boyfriend. I don't know if I've told you about my secret gay boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. He's so secret, he doesn't know he's my secret gay boyfriend, but it's, I'm fine with it. And also, Maddie Majacomo, who I love. I took a few running classes. You know, their names him. are copyrighted. You're going to get in trouble for saying that. Sorry, it's, they're not owned by me. They're just my secret gay boyfriends, okay? It's Peloton, and I'm a full-fledged cult member. So I got back into, literally into the saddle, and so today my butt hurts because I had gone so long that I have to now re-break my butt into the whole biking world again. So my tailbones are like, oh, excuse me, what did you do to me yesterday? And um, anyway, yeah, so I've been back uh, yeah, having to, like, count pay attention to what I eat and all that fun and oh yeah well somebody posted on Facebook this morning that at the Hidden Cypress pool uh, we have three pools where I live the outdoor ones and people like to go early in the morning and use the walking lanes and whatever there was a little alligator swimming in it this morning <laughs> and so, so of course all the responses were when are their hours? Do they swim when we do? Were they in the walking lane? They shouldn't be walking in the water they shouldn't be swimming in the walking lane because that's the walking lane and on and on and I said hey Let's give him some. Let's give him some credit. He's there early in the morning, right. exercising. Right. Which I say every morning when I get up, I'm going to go walk in the walking lanes at the pool, and then I see the coffee pot. Right. And two hours later, I, I it hasn't happened. Well, we went this morning um, after I was covered in you know 75 gallons of puke. I was like. Okay, we need to go out to breakfast because then my husband was like trying to clean up the puke, and then he stepped in a puddle of. Uh, filth on the floor and so he came into the bathroom and was like oh my god oh. and so I'm like yeah this is an epic start we're gonna I said let's go to breakfast so we went to squat and gobble and I think I had I love squat and gobble See, it, it's an iconic yeah, it's uh, breakfast place squat in and gobble here. it's called the squat and gobble squat and gobble so you have to go at least once they had all these gorgeous fresh cinnamon rolls that they had just taken out of the <gasps> oven and I was like oh my god and um, yeah of course I can't eat them because they're not on the I try to start being a fatty plan, so um, I bought them for my daughter so I could live vicariously. But then I had 75 cups of coffee while I was trying to wash out the, the filth of, of feeling You're still. You're talking pretty slow for 75. For 75, cups. I know, I know. Well, it's, you know, what is going on here? Oh, I hate when I have to Oh, we still haven't seen any pictures of your projects. We would love to see them. Even if you're not working on Right. And this. we're also thinking of doing a retreat. I've planned them before, so I kind of know how to do it. I've taken bus trips before, too. That was a lot of fun. Oh, we'll have to find trips. something. I'm thinking like in next spring. Next spring. That will give us a chance to plan it. So we're, our, I, we're not, uh, we're going to give ourselves a few more weeks, I think, to work on this. Um, but because I have, you know, like I said, new shop, and so I'm still trying to make shop models and teach some classes and keep going. Uh, we have an amigurumi class next week. If uh, you want to get in on that trend, I have the cutest girl, Ella Bruggeman, who is teaching this class, and we're making a cute little cow. It's crochet, if uh, if that's your thing. Come on down. We're going to work on that. But uh, Flaming June is our next knit-along project, and so Judy introduced this cardigan to me. It's super cute, super cute. Now, the challenge with I found with Flaming June was when I looked it up on Ravelry and I went to get the, the um, pattern for it, download it, it was all in Italian. So you have to go to the one below it in Ravelry where, is it a magazine that prints it out? No, remember? it used to be a website. Um, I can't remember. I looked at it recently, but it's, so you have to go to the one below. If you go to the Ravelry download, at least when I was trying, it was, um, yeah, I kept doing it on me, too. Yeah, it was in Italian. And I found all my copies. Which I speak it. Spanish, and I, I can therefore read most romance. Oh, thanks. Most, most romance languages I can read, and I can understand when spoken. Um, but I don't want to screw up my patterns, so I've gone. Does it say at the top? It Nitty does. Before him. Yes. Nitty.com. Yes, down at the bottom here. Nitty.com slash issues 12. Pat Fleming, June. Fleming, June. Yeah. So... It's really cute. This is not a very good picture of it because you can't see the, you know, she did here. some really cute colors. But here. that's what the pattern looks like. Oh, here it is. Really cute colors. So the, that is the pattern for it. If you want to join us on our knit along, it's going to be it's in a couple be weeks. so much better than the first one. And yeah. I brought my first one that I did. I'm going to show because the colors. Remember, I told you, this is my joke for the day. I told you that it was one of the first things I, I really knitted. And I used the hemp. You know, I use the hemp because hemp grows. Now, I have washed this. Last week, I decided, oh, I'll get it out, and I'll wash it in hot water and dry it. 
Did you dry it in the dryer or just yeah, the dryer? Yeah, oh, no, I ran it in the dryer. Oh my goodness, and? With did it, towels. Did it help? No. Oh. <laughs> it kind of did lengthwise, but I haven't had it on for five minutes. But see, I didn't understand about measurements. Well, and also I think your arms, you'd be... Well, I have to show you my arms. That's why I'm going to put it on. <laughs> I mean, the knitting is beautiful. This is when I teach the measurement class. These are the measurements you should take on yourself. And you know exactly what you measure. So I didn't know that because it said, I, I didn't realize that I had narrow shoulders at the time. So it said, you knit it to this length. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even, it's so cute on me. It's so, don't, don't go, I'm not knitting that ugly thing. It's going to be so much better. Go into Ravelry and look at all the projects. So, yeah, it is the size, size of Egypt on you. And you haven't even worn it yet, so. I wore it for five minutes and it grew to this. <laughs> you see, look, even as I stand there, it grows more and more and more and more and more. And more. Well, well, your stitches are in, No, incredible. but I didn't know how to sew up sides because you look at that and you go, oh my God, what is that on that side? Look you at it. You have to learn. Look how bad it is. But look learn. at this. But, but just to show you that I do know how to do Look. Yes, now it's so gorgeous. It's gorgeous. gorgeous. I love you that. Even I love that piece. I can't even love it. see the scene. Love that piece. So I had to bring that to show you today because I got it out and I went, I wonder if I shrink it really good. Or, nah, 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 nah. I put it on and went, maybe it'll work. And then I had gorilla arms that were dragging the ground on the sleeve. So. <laughs> well, why don't you wear that so you can clean up the dust bunnies in the shop? Oh, you can have it. <laughs> so... So my colors, uh, we, they came in the other day. So as I mentioned that we're going with Zoe at Juniper Moon Farm. Um, so these are my two colors. I'm going with this one and this one. So this one is going to be the body, and this will be the bottom, the bottom, the flaming. Part. I'm going to get in this out. So well, mine's like a royal. Yeah, I'm going to. Do, you can put yeah, it's fine. I thought it can go wherever. I just put it up where it had space. And mine is so royal blue with the green bottom. Yep, so these are our two colors. And I like hers. Yes, and I, I was also admiring yours. And I also thought that blue would go nice with that pink that it's right next to. Down there, that Zoe. No, down below. Yeah. Eh. I like those two colors. I like these two together. Yeah, there's a lot of fun. And I like these two together. Ooh, yeah. The light blue and green. So that's going to be oh, my you first... You can see that. I know you can't. My first um, knitting with Zoe from Juniper Moon, so if we like it, we will definitely stock some more. And I can always order, so if there's something that you're looking for, I work with a ton of companies that I just don't have the room to stock everything that I want to. And also my husband always says, don't get over your skis, little bits at a time. And I'm like, but I want it all. I want it to be, like you walk in and it goes, oh, kind of does that for me now. And if you, if you look at her pattern, Nitty used, Nitty used to do things like easy, blah, 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 pecant. Tangy was a little, like, intermediate. This is pecant, which means... Spicy? It can be a little hard. It's four out of five. Oh. Three out of four. So, but because, and we found out a lot of it, What's she never went back in and up, <laughs> low, updated. She didn't? No. Oh, so, so there's, there's no some errata? mistakes. Oh, yeah, no oh yeah, there are. But um, I have my original that I wrote out a lot of them. And all I know is that when we get to it, I'll have to take it. The left one is right because there's a point that comes down, it's supposed to come down over this. This one is right. This one ends up over here. Oh, so you kind of have to know where to put it right. in relationship. And the shawl collar can be a little tricky, but once I got it going, I didn't have any problem with it. You just have to pay attention. So it is, a, it is picante. 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 Yeah, it's spicy. So, but it is so cute on. And it's one of those you grab to run to the store in or whatever. You know? I, I'm a huge cardigan. I'm also I'm like too. an old woman. I've always been like an old woman trapped in a, you know, well, at some point a young person's body. Now I've gotten to middle age, which is ridiculous because I still feel like I should, I should have just been in college like, you know, a couple of years ago. And yet now I'm almost 50. So not sure why that well, happened. But. And you want to really measure your chest. For this one, if you decide to do it, because I'm gonna wave hi. We got hold on, we got Dream Weaves by Wendy. Thank you so much for joining, Sam. I hope you're having fun at work today. We miss you. See you soon. And Bria, oh my goodness, hi, sweetheart. This is my one of my kids, Bria. So she's yeah, joining me Bria. from she's joining me from upstate New York, it's, uh, the Watertown region, and she is my very bestest friend, who's so really like my sister. Um, she was my first like baby girl. Um, so Beth's a little girl, Bria, she was my baby. I'm one and a half. Now she's got a baby girl that's, uh, 
I think almost seven months old, who is the cutest little muffin you ever saw. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us. So how many we got today? Yeah. You know, it looks like several. So yay, thank yeah. you guys for joining us. Going back to this. Sorry, excuse us. This is an open one. It will not cross over. So it tends to hang like here. You need to decide whether you like that or not, or whether you want it closed further, because it does make a difference in what you choose for your finished um, size. And it does have, um, and you don't want the biggest size. You do not, because it, it, it tends to be large. And this does have negative ease. And we talked about ease the other day, didn't we? A couple well, you ago. mentioned it when we talked about the fact that I had I needed to add some stitches right to this. so that's one thing you want to look at somebody else just came in I think somebody else just coming me or else it's a weather alert oh it's a weather alert okay. hello we're getting weather here okay. Good to know. <laughs> um, when, you're, when I'm looking at patterns especially now right now because um, big loose sweaters are in the baggy style is in and it, you want to read what the ease is. Ease is how much give it gets. This has about, um, I would say this has a lot of positive ease. And so I went down several sizes because I did, but I wanted it kind of big and baggy. And plus it's cotton. So now it is that based brown. on the pattern or the yarn? Based on the pattern. Okay. Okay. So you want to look at what the pattern measurement says and what the finished measurement says. Because if it's, if it's positive ease and it says... It has 10 to 15 inches of positive ease. It's going to be really baggy on you. And if you don't like that, you want to go down a few sizes. Like if it says it has, uh, um, I hate to admit it, I have a 48 inch chest, as you can see when it's I'm sitting here. Lady. But if it says it has 15 inches of positive ease, that would put it at over 60 inches wide. And I don't want to be that big and baggy. So I go down a couple sizes. And then, of course, I swatch. If it's no ease and no ease at all means it's going to fit you like a t-shirt negative ease means it's going to fit you like a bra it's going to be tighter this has two inches negative ease but remember your yarn may not do that so it's really important you swatch okay and then it's really important I know, my, my, I have a friend that thinks swatching is a dirty word. Swatch. Is that me? Is that, your, is that your friend? It's me? No. Okay. <laughs> I just asked I have, you to swatch. I'm sorry. I have two friends. <laughs> is that uh, friend me? Because it probably is. Yeah, yeah. what is? <laughs> yeah. Um, I maybe forget what I was going to say. Oh. Negative ease, positive ease. Yeah, so you really want to, you really want to swatch. So tonight right. when Judy goes to work at the Foxy Lady, she'll be wearing something that she knit with negative ease. I don't have Oh. Well, maybe maybe my pajama top that I bought is a little negative. <laughs> so those, those are things that you want to look at. And, and that's very important on a sweater. Yep. Gauge is very, very important on a sweater. And, and maybe next week we'll talk about that great, um, if I can get it to come up, because I don't always get good Wi-Fi in here for you. Because it's, it's a cave. A, um, I, it's a cave in here. There's a great app. And it's, it's I think, it, you do have to pay for it, but it's under five bucks, I think. If you do a lot of sweaters, it's called um, Knit Trick. And in it, maybe I can pull it up. Let me see. If, yeah. It is fabulous for making your sweaters fit. I say that and watch this one won't fit. <laughs> no, I'll make myself out to be a liar. My last two fit perfectly. Now you, you've Knit been, Trick. But you've been doing this for so long, okay. you know what all your measurements are. Knit Trick are. looks like a little calculator with a yarn, ball of yarn, okay? On it, when you pull it up, it has three things. Adjust a pattern, how much will it matter, and work from your measurements. If this is the best one, how much will it matter? So, for example, I was doing this with someone, and I left it in. They're getting 13 stitches for 4 inches. The pattern calls for 19 stitches equal 4 inches. So they're not getting a lot, okay? Okay. And it calls for different um, number of, um, and how many, I do what's cast on. Pattern stitch is 60. So the pattern intends for you to have, so because you're putting on more stitches, should be 12.63 inches. Okay? Instead, you're going to get 18, and you're going to have five inches more than any than what the pattern calls for all the way around right so you get to reduce your stitches yeah so you've got to know that yeah that's going to make it a lot bigger 
And then you can go work for measurements. And what I kind of like with that is, if I know I'm getting 13 stitches for four inches, pattern, we, we, pattern this is great for color work, require whole repeats of, that is what the pattern calls for, 79 stitches. I'm And I'm putting on 36. I'm going to be 11 inches, 11 inches too small. So then you can play with how many stitches you really want to put on. So instead of doing 36 stitches, I might want to put on 80 stitches. Now I'm only seven inches too small. And you can play with that way. So I can't put on, let's go 120 and see what happens. Oh, now I'm an inch too big, uh, 100 stitches. You know, I gave up math for lunch, right? I know. So um, I but have this to- you can kind of play with. Call and, Judy. And it works. Or to get the sample, or just call Judy. <laughs> so you can put in how many more stitches other than the 79 to get it to come out even. And it's like, oh, okay. So I want to use this yarn. This is the gauge I'm getting. All I got to do is add like, instead of 79 stitches, I'll put on 100 stitches and then I get mine. So Knit Trick is great. I had to play with it for quite a while before I understood how to use it to my advantage. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to show unless you're working with somebody who actually has a pattern, a pattern they're trying to. And we're doing it. And, and, then, and you know, then they go, oh, okay. I never worry about with gauge a lot of times my length. I, I worry about the width. Right. Because length, I usually add you know, I either make longer or shorter anyway. So right. length is not such a big deal, adjusting gauge. Width is a big deal. Yes. Especially to, for us buxom friends. I know. I, you know, my insurance agency said, why do you want, my medical insurance said, why do you want a breast reduction? And I said, because I don't have to buy as much yarn. <laughs> Tell me your favorite color. I will um, do, you know, send you some inventory. So I'm like, all right, well, you never know if they're just trying to promote and get their yarn out there or whatever. So I'm like, all right. So I play along. I'm like, well, blue is, is my favorite color. She's like, okay, so send me your bank account information. <laughs> I will deposit $800. Oh, okay. I'm oh, going right on that. <laughs> I, I just put like the, the faces that had the tears laughing. I'm like, what? I mean, does anyone actually? You know, my uncle that? in Nigeria says that's a scam. Wow, well, I don't believe him because my friend that's going to give me a castle in Ireland says it's not. No. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, I'm making my rounds here. How are you? What are you doing? I think you should tell about your Yelp review from Liz. Oh my God! So, I just started. Started the yelping, okay? Liz, I know you watch this every Friday. You know it's gonna. Liz, oh my God, I love you so much, Liz. Hurry up! Why aren't you here? She has two weeks. Two weeks. Hurry up! She'll be here. She'll be here. I thought it was August. August. Is she coming to the beginning of August? Two first two weeks of August. Oh, sweet! I cannot wait to see you. So she she did she gave me a lovely Yelp review, but then she said my name was Shrimp and Grits. Um, 
I don't, people are going to want to have food here. They're going to come and have, they're like, where is your, do you have a buffet? I mean, what are your Sunday hours? You're We're not open. in the bathroom right now. Hold on. <laughs> We've got a hot pot right over there. Shrimp and some grits in there. So, yeah, no, shrimp and knits, K-N-I-T-S. So. I know, so I, I, I laughed. Her, I went. Tracy sweet. said you sent her uh, a Yelp review for tr shrimp and grits, and she didn't catch it. And she sends it back, and she goes, I know, I love Tracy. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, but I said, yes, but it's shrimp and knits, <laughs> not shrimp and grits. Hungry people are at the door. <laughs> and she goes, oh, my God, autocorrect. And she goes... We, we have been getting, like, you know, everyone knows the South that gets this crazy rain in the afternoon. So it's not an atypical situation, but we have been getting a deluge of, of oh, rain. Your, your it is, husband. oh my God, my poor husband was out yesterday. He had, he had met his friend, they were out on their motorcycles. And, you know, he watches the weather. I mean, he, he pays attention and he knows when he's going to get home. Well, the weather here is so bizarre. Like, literally, we've had it pouring like cats and dogs in our backyard, and our front yard is completely yeah. dry. Right no, over our house. And it's raining, but not in front of right. us. It's absolutely, it's the most insane thing I've ever seen. So, we uh, we were meeting yesterday. Every Thursday, we have our, our happy hour here, and so we had a group of us, and we were all knitting and laughing, and or crocheting and laughing, and he comes in, and I'm like, hey, he's like, oh, I'm soaked. I mean, he is Dripping. I'm like, well, don't go near the yard. I'm like, what are you doing? So concerned. <laughs> so, yeah, that's you what know, concerned wife. wife of the year over here. So, yeah, he's he's dripping a little bit. I'm like, well, oh my god, go clean that off. So, um, he gets kind of dryish. I don't want to say dry, but uh, and he's like, not all right, I got to dripping gotta, anymore. Not, yeah, yeah, exactly. He he. Then he leaves here. He's like, all right, I got to get home. I got to try to beat it before it gets, you know, on the road to our house. And I live. Wow three miles yeah, from here, four miles. Right. I mean, not far at all. And it's a straight shot. Well, and we're here and looking outside and it's just, it's thundering. It's, it's, thundering. It. it's dark, but there's nothing coming down. Nothing. And he starts, he gets home. He sends this video to us. He's like, oh my God, between the three miles between here and our house, it was hailing. He's like, I think I got hit in the head with marbles. So his <laughs> face is all like, I'm like, oh my god, dude, and and he doesn't feel pain. I mean, the man does not feel pain, and he's showing us videos. Hail, in the face. The stuff in the garage is still soaked. I'm like, dude, you gotta put that in a dryer. He's like, yeah. I just I walked in. I walked through the whole house naked, and we live right on a golf course, so I'm sure they love that. Don't you? So. <laughs> I do too. But. Yeah, so it was, it was it was a good time, but yeah, it's the the most bizarre. Well, I know weather. they can't see inside my Carolina room because I have been known to run through there naked or not wearing. Oh, we have all glass. Uh, we have all windows on that yeah, side of the well, house I have and windows too. You've seen it. Oh yeah, yep. But for some reason you can't because I've been on that side. I've walked over the golf course and looked, and, and you really can't. It's tinted or something. So isn't your alligator named Kevin? Is that what you? Is that Kevin your alligator? Yeah, it's Kevin. Has he visited lately? Um, Kevin's been on the other side of the golf course. He had a big fish the other day. Oh, see, I'm sad because we normally had this one big alligator that every time I would drive into our our community, he was right there in this big, you know, kind of little pond right next to the golf course. And then I would take my ride, and every day I'd see him at a certain time. And he must have moved. They and they're on the move. I'm sad because I felt like I've lost a pet. But you got to also remember it's summertime, and they don't come up much. They stay down in the mud. I know. It's cool. I know, but I feel like we did get a little guy in there. Um, but he didn't stay long either. Yeah, so. Somebody in my somebody in our group was talking. I was knitting at my group where I live. We have a big knitting group. She's a hussy. She gets around with her I knitting. I do. I do. I'm a yarn whore. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, they were talking about something that happened on the golf course. They were on the golf course and they were laughing. At, oh, they were watching this guy almost get thrown off the golf course as he went around the corner. And they were all laughing about funny things. I said, I never get to see anything funny. Well, sometimes I do with their outfits. <laughs> but... I get to see him like I'm sitting in my Carolina room and I see a group of four because it's like the Lagoon, Tea Box, T7. If anybody here from Sun City is listening, I watch you. <laughs> um, the Oka Tea Course. And then the Woods. Thank, oh, we're right off the Tea Box too, thank God, so yeah. nothing hits really? our house. Now, I watch them get out, walk over to the Woods and go to the bathroom. Oh. I'm like, I can see you. Well, oh. Hello. Thankfully, I don't have that view because... I, I always want to go out with scorecards. Okay, for artistic merit, that was a seven point four. <laughs> well, I always want to like haze them at some point because some of them you can just hear that it's going to be a good, you know, hit, and yeah. then some of them you're like, oh, ooh, I don't know. got all the house I, on that I, one. I like to watch on Sundays when like their the little son-in-laws come in and they're going to impress their father-in-law, and well, I'm going to hit it from the far back tee box, you know, because there's like women's beginners. Advanced beginners, like knitting, intermediates, advanced. 
Now they pull up and they're going to hit it from the advance. PGA. Yeah. They hit it to the next tee box and they get in their cart. And they drive five feet and they get out and they hit it again and it goes about five feet down and they get in their cart and they drive down and it's like this. I can't make fun of that because that is also how I golf. No, but I uh, my uh, my dad is a big golfer and he was at he came recently and. Uh, he says, oh, it's the Pete Dye course, and the Pete Dye who designed ours, and he, he met him one time and cursed him out because his courses are always awful. But he said, ours isn't too bad, so. Where do you go, go fam? So, yeah, he's like, your course. He's like, oh. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you don't start on the very hardest tee, do you? Me? God, no. Well, see, this is what I, these, I'd be on the kitty. This is what these people I'd do. be on the kitty tee. I'd be and like. And they're dressed like, I don't know, like Patrick Stewart. I mean, Pat, not Patrick Stewart. Payne, <laughs> Patrick, like, Payne, for, Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart. With the, with the yeah, socks really and everything. Yeah, yeah. They get out. Patrick Stewart. He's dressed like he's going to be flying into outer space. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has the ears. Right? Yeah. Uh, anyways, you know, and the father-in-laws get out and they're just like, oh, God. And they're looking around like, yeah, it's my son law yeah, But the sorry. best one is, because you can, you can, you know, they come down maybe a lot of times just for three months. They're snowbirds. Mm -hmm. It's. January, the wind is whipping. I mean, we have some days, you know, it's, and it's actually spitting snow. Yeah. And they're out there golfing. They're dressed like that nook of the north, you know. <laughs> and they're like, you too can dress like that nook of the north, and you can swing a golf course. <laughs> not cult club, not very well, but you can just hear them. My God, I paid for three months. I'm golfing every day, no matter what. And well, it's like you know, but ridiculous. it is it is better than up north. My dad golfs in Rhode Island. Um, all, he drives year round, and I'm like, oh my God. My husband does, did that when we lived up north. And they had a contest to see how long they could go. They were actually golfing on New Year's Day one year. We did a uh, polar plunge a couple of years ago with our friends. Yeah. And uh, it was 70 here, so. Yeah. <laughs> Is that polar? I don't think so. Right. No, but the water's cold. Yeah, it wasn't that cold. I mean, it was really? chilly, but it wasn't like up north where you just cry for why is everything. And you know, hurt. The, the water, we were down south, but the water gets cold in the winter. I mean, the ocean water gets cold. And it gets down into the 60s or whatever. And my friend has an oceanfront condo in Myrtle Beach, and she's always up there in March. And the water's still cold. It doesn't get in the water. The water doesn't really get warm till like the end of May. Down here. But here's the thing: warm. You're is, used to it. I, it. Warm is relative because when I lived in Rhode Island, you'd go to the beach. Narragansett Beach would be, uh, it would be a thousand billion degrees. Yeah, I lived the, on Narragansett the, Beach. The the the, the, uh, the sand is so hot that you're running across it, trying yeah. not to like get third degree burns. And friend, my, my friend Gretchen did get bad burns, the yeah, poor thing, and her feet were all like bubbled up, but, and then you get to the water and you want to die because now your heart stopped because it's so cold, it even yeah. in August, yeah. so, you know. Well, you're used to it, but it, it can be cold down here. My, my friend, like, she cracks up because she says, all these people, all these, during spring break, it's March, and Myr Myrtle Beach, believe it or not, you, you can differ, even though it's only three hours up the road, it can differ almost 20 degrees. Oh, they sure. have snow oh, and yeah, ice oh, yeah. and everything else. Well, North Carolina gets hit. Yep. Yeah. So she says, she says she sits there and she likes to watch it because all these little college kids come down and the girls put on their bikinis and they're like, oh, water, it's the action! And they go running out and they go, ah, ah, ah. So they go running back out and she says it's hysterical yeah. every year. Yeah. Because they think, oh, Myrtle Beach, it's going to be hot. And it's like, honey, it ain't hot in Myrtle Beach in, in March. Sorry. No. Well, I thought the same thing when we went to um, the Bahamas for Christmas, and it was only 60 and rained the whole time, so I pretty much cried my whole vacation. That was awesome. You can imagine. I was in Atlantis and just crying and crying. It was good. It was, it was, good. It was fun for us all, as you can mm. imagine. So, all right. Let me just put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. How are we doing there? I really want to see where yours done. You know, I, I, really, I really do. I think what you need to do, if you don't live here, is to make a trip down and show us in person. Yes, road trip. I just feel like the only person I'm knitting with is her. And she's so excited about it. <laughs> she's so lucky, clearly. <laughs> uh, you have never met two people more compatible in your life <laughs> than Tracy and I. From well, the, it took two seconds to get to know each other. Yeah, the first day I was like, okay, you're my knitting bestie. She's like, okay, weirdo stalker, but she's she dropped Liz, the stalker Liz is part. also my knitting bestie. Oh, yeah. Liz is that kind of friend, I, I kid you not, you should call or I'd call her and we'd be talking and she'd go, what are you going to do today? And I said, I think i got to go to Savannah. Okay, pick me up in five minutes and she'd be ready to go. I can't wait till she gets here. And we'd come back hours later. Might not have bought anything, but we ate well and laughed a lot. Oh, that's, that's my, my bestie Beth. She and I, uh, we just, 
right off the bat. We worked in radio together, so she did the show a little bit after mine. I did mornings, and then she did, um, I can't remember exactly the times, but she was right after me, and so, you know, girls are tough, man. Girls are tough. If you either, you know, you're a girl that loves girls and supports women and things like that, or you're a woman that uh, hates women, and I don't understand it, but it is what it is, right? I fall somewhere in between. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like you do. I feel like you are very supportive of other women. Some days I feel like, if you've ever watched Mike and Molly, his mother, the grump ass, <laughs> some days I feel like that. Maybe that's just at home. Well, we always have those grumpy days, but no, I think I feel like you're a woman that supports women, you know? So, yeah, no, it's good. Um, I support women's causes. I know, you support women. So like, when do. people are working on stuff, you're always like really positive about what they're doing. And I, I, I have to disagree it's with you. been done better than me. Oh. And that's, I didn't say you weren't a bitter it's, bitch. That's the Sheldon Cooper <laughs> smile. <laughs> You know, where they say, just act like you, or you're pleased, Sheldon. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I met Beth, I, you know, she, she had just started, and she's, a, I mean, just stunning, gorgeous, blonde, beautiful, fun, funny, like, she'd been there, done that, and I was this new person. I'd never been on the radio my whole life, and here I am doing mornings. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going to figure it out in front of all y'all. That was fun. And so I walked in, and she was on the air, and I'm like, oh, my God, can I just freak out about something right now? And she's like, yeah, come on in. And that pretty much uh, did it. So that was, she's been my my bestie since I was 22, and now I'm yeah, 27. Had, so it's been a great five same, years. Yeah, you have the same sense of humor. Then got to clutch onto them, man. Funny yeah. people, they're your gift to the world. Especially humor like Tracy's and mine. <laughs> I mean, somebody may not have been laughing at what we've been laughing at, but yeah. Well, sorry about that. But we'll 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 drag you to the other side. I mean, she you may have been going, oh my God, her poor husband got hit with marble sized hail. We're going. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I, yeah. Sorry. No, I did feel bad. For oh, that's why I'm like, this is the size. Her husband is such Egypt. a cutie, too. Mine? Yes, he is. So when Liz gets here, she will be here during the podcast. Oh, good. She doesn't know that yet. I haven't said anything. Oh, she knows. Right. Liz, hurry up. My gosh. She's only seen for two weeks. Can we talk her into more? I know. She'd like to. I know. All right, we got to work on that. What if we hold her hostage? Do we, do we get arrested if, if she no. doesn't press charges? No, I don't think so. All right. Liz. My husband makes the best biscuits and gravy, if you're a truck driver special person. I love biscuits and gravy. And he makes the best, I mean the best, and, and he fixed them for her one time when she came down to visit. And so just about every Sunday, she texts me, she goes, is it, Bert, is it biscuits and gravy day? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be ready in about five minutes. Go on biscuits down. and gravy at Kirby's bread and bre Bed and Breakfast. Come join us. Hey, and I do like biscuits. Um, I'm not a giant biscuits and gravy fan, but um, I'll be happy. Gordon, I'll take a biscuit. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll tell you the other thing he makes. It's like 3,000 calories a spoonful, but it's so good. He makes the absolute best shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. Not nits. Nits that you have ever tasted in your life. It was actually a restaurant's recipe down here that they posted. And he stole? You make it with heavy cream. Sounds so... Smoked gouda. That is to die Smoked for. Gouda. Mm -hmm. Sounds and very healthy. trick to the, to the grits. You never just throw them in. You toast them first. Ooh. So they get, get this, a little crunchy to them? Yeah, they get not a little crunch, but this little toasty taste to them. Mm -hmm. And then you cook them. They're good. We don't make them too often because it's like heart attack on a spoon, but it's so good. Yeah, that sounds good. That was mine. If you'd like it, let me know. I'll send it on to you. Martha Stewart, if you're listening today. <laughs> Which we know you are. Getting some tips and joining and joining us while we... We love your, your, your mixed berry cobbler. We do? Oh my gosh, you can get it at Food Lion. It's in the frozen food section. Oh yeah? And it's like a mixed berry. I want to say cobbler, but it's not... What's the other thing that you do that you throw? It looks like oats and stuff. So good. Cobbler. We're going to go with cobbler. It is to die for. It is so good. You you cook it, you know, in the oven, and mm -hmm. then you put the ice cream on top, the mixed berries. It is really, really good. It's Martha Stewart's. So the other night we were watching TV, and my husband looked over at me, and he goes, what would you say if I told you I'd make you some well, a berry cobbler right now? And I looked over at him, <laughs> and I went, I have never wanted you more. <laughs> Do me now or get out. <laughs> right here, right now, baby. 
Then you can fix the mixed berry cobbler. No, do the berry cobbler first. Oh, it's so good. Put a little vanilla bean ice cream on it. Oh, so good. Mike. Now, that means if you live down here, I don't want to go food line and find out that shelf is empty because I've told everybody to go get it. Somebody right. else just popped in. I'm good. Hello. Welcome. We're glad you're here. But, man, is it good. All right. Let's see. Who are we saying hello to? Hello, Yarn Explorer. Thank you for joining us. And also, PR Harris. I'm glad you guys are here. I hope you're enjoying. Loop, what yarn wave are you exploring and wave. Today? I know, yarn explorer. What yeah. are we exploring? Yeah. Fill us in. Inquiring minds want to know. Explore these. You have oh yeah, them. I haven't talked about these. So anytime anyone enters my shop, and it's it's a long, long walk because the shop is huge. I mean, when you have to go from here to here and trip over everything because it's, it's fifteen feet of really heavy walking. It is so. <laughs> I mean, I have to take a golf cart, you know, just to get through the door. Anyway, so I make everybody experience this this is oh my god it is the most decadent luxurious gorgeous amazing yarn in my opinion this is my absolute favorite yarn on earth and if you have otherwise let me know because I would love to see what you say but so I have these Hanks they are so gorgeous so the fiber company this is called road to China light and it is absolutely soft I, I tell my husband when I pass no casket nothing for me just wrap me in yarn and tell me how hot I looked as a yarn ball, and just so skinny and young. Uh, she's Go with not that. supposed to do that though, because I'm supposed to be her next of skein. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. Like, like Liz is my next of skein. When I die, she she gets my yarn. Right. So that makes sense. Pe that should be people who think, appreciate think like it. Like a baby rabbit. Oh That's yeah. That's how soft it is. And it's made of alpaca, silk, camel, and cashmere. So camel to me is an interesting, because I always kind of imagine it with bristly camel. Would would um. The uh, camel give it some strength? Maybe. So that way. Otherwise, it would be entirely too drapey. But it would be like, mmm. So look at these colors. Aren't they so much fun? So these are all these different colors that we've got here. And this you can is Road order on to China side. Light. So, yes, I can order on my side. I ha there are Not other the colors. Blue. The blue is all mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, and the pink, I'm making a. Where's my pink? So this one I'm going to be making newlands i believe was the name of this shirt that i'm gonna make that's with this one so um yeah it's so gorgeous it is absolutely if you want something that is either a gift that says holy crap i love the hell out of you then buy this or if you're like treat yourself treat yourself then you also want this yarn because you don't want to give it to someone who doesn't appreciate it because you spend hours and like you know a king's ransom on yarn you want it somebody who's going to go oh my god i didn't know anyone loved me this much and so yes and shrimp and knits.com all these things are on here and there are other colors available if you want something i can ship it anywhere in the continental u.s because or we'll make it a girls trip and come to you yes we'll drive someplace it. interesting well, if you buy enough of it we'll drive it right yeah, to you we will. so and deliver <laughs> It'll take a while because we're going to hit that road trip icon on Ravelry first and stop at all the shops on the way. Well, I just looked at my watch and holy cow, we've already done an hour. No way! I know, right? So thank you for another uh, day of you listening to our ramblings. Remember how to do the jobless stripes and it's right in the pattern so you can read it. Where's my right pattern? Yeah. You can read it. It's right at the bottom of page five. All right. It tells you how to do it. All right. So, I don't know what my homework is. What's my homework for this week? Get it done. Get it done? Okay. No. I don't work on it. Oh, get it done. It's not getting there for me either. So, but. all right. We'll see what I can do. But I'll work on it. So. Because you only, we only have two more weeks, you said. What? And I think next week I may not be at that point, but we're going to talk about how you add the i cord on the bottom. Just okay. so that we'll go over that direction. We'll, we'll figure it out. So, I may not be done because I'm still working on, still working on this beauty. So, it, but it's so, such thin yarn. It's so that the sleeve is coming, but it uh, it's taken a little bit of time. So we're about to do where I have to now add pleats. I've never added pleats before in uh, a knit project, but uh, it's happening. Oh yes, it's happening. Well, thank you so much for listening to our babblings and I hope you have a great day. If you have any questions, email me, text me, whatever the case is. I'm here at the shop pretty much all the time at our clubhouse. My husband says, you don't go to work, you enjoy it. So it's our clubhouse. But uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, show us what you're making. Send it to me on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm now on TikTok. I'll have to make up some knitting dance. And uh, all right. Have a great week. We'll see you next Friday. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye.